Stay all day. Stay all day. Into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that it's called work on your game my name is dre baldwin also known as dre all day and welcome to the show and today's topic are we getting into it today your topic today is your success is not in ot it is not god's plan oh yes we're gonna we're gonna go all the way there today but before we get into any of that let me remind everybody or inform me if you didn't know that every single day I send out a daily motivation text message free of charge to everyone who's in my text community. This message will get your day started and have you focused, sharp, and on point, at least to start the day. Now, if you want to get this message, all you got to do is text me right now at the following number, 305-384-6894. And every day when I send out the daily motivation text, you shall receive this message straight to your phone, free of charge, straight to your phone. So all you got to do to get it is just go there right now and boom. You'll be getting that daily motivation text every single day when I send it out starting tomorrow morning. Now, the other thing is, if you like to work with me directly, sometimes people ask me, Dre, what are the options for working with you? What are the different ways that I can do it? I'll tell you, there is one way to work with me directly. Actually, I mean, if you want to call, listen to the show working with me, you're not really because I'm not, I'm putting this out for you know, anyone to consume. So I wouldn't call, I wouldn't count this as working with me. If you want to work with me directly, there's one way to do it. What you do is you go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Workonyourgameuniversity.com. On that page, you will see everything that you need to do to work with me directly. That's workonyourgameuniversity.com. You can see uh, what we do, how we do it, where we do it, and what you need to do to get involved and get in the game. So you listen to this show, you get my daily motivation text message, maybe you get my emails, and you're ready to go to the next level. You're ready to take another step. You're ready to go further than... Uh, consuming the free shit <laughs> okay go to work on your game university.com that's where it's going down so with all that said let's get into the topic which is your success is not god's plan now i told you very recently that this episode will be coming very soon so now those of you who are new around here when you hear me tell you something that's coming very soon it doesn't always mean the next day but it means relatively it means soon okay so this one is a long time coming. I'm surprised I hadn't talked about it before. It's a topic that needs to be addressed directly and head on, and I am appointing myself as one who is most qualified to do this. So let me uh, be clear from the beginning and offer a couple disclaimers. Number one, this has nothing to do with religion. Number two, this has nothing to do with your faith, how much faith you have, how much faith you do not have. This is, there's nothing sacrilegious that I'm gonna be saying here in today's episode. This is about the concept of you taking uh, whatever outcome you wish to achieve or have happen in your life and instead of taking ownership of it and saying hey it is my plan to make this happen or i'm taking ownership of making this happen instead you say well hey if it's god's plan that thing is going to happen as if it is more on god than it is on you in order for you to achieve your success i am telling you right now and i'm like as i get into this episode you'll understand more about this i completely reject that concept I talked about this in episode 1282, the 5149 rule, helping people who help themselves. And guess what? God, uh, God applies the 5149 rule just as much as I do, maybe more than I do. But let's get into the point. So I don't even have to uh, step on anything else I'm going to talk about here today. Point number one, topic once again is your success is not based on God's plan. Number one, calling the outcome that you wish to achieve or saying that, hey, it is all based on what God's plan is. This is an excuse that people use so that they can remain non-committal to their goals. Saying, okay, well, I want to I wanna make it to the NFL, and I will if it's God's plan. Or, hey, I want to start a business and make more money, and I will if it's God's plan. I want to get married and have kids in the next five years, and if it's God's plan, then I'll do it. All right, putting it on God takes all the pressure and responsibility off of you and puts it on God. Well, see, it ain't God's, it is not God's um, responsibility for those things to happen in your life. And let me tell you why I'm saying that. God gave you free will to do as you wished to do with your life. I don't care what religion you are or are not, what religious text you study or do not study, what one you used to study, which ones you have bounced around between, there is no religion in the world that, that rejects the concept that you were given free will by your higher being, whoever it may be. 
You were given free will when you were put here on this planet to do what you wanted to do. So if you want to do something stupid, you can do it. You want to do something smart, you can do that. All right, you, whatever direction you want to go, you have free will to do it. God is not going to intervene and stop you from doing anything that you choose to do. He gave you free will to do as you wish. This is why you are free to do what the religion that you follow says do. You're also free to go completely against it and do the exact opposite of what your chosen religion chooses or to have no religion whatsoever. You don't want to have a religion and you want to completely reject the presence of a God. You want to be an atheist. You have a right to do that too. God has given you the right to do all of those things. So if you think, so just think about that. If God has given you free will to where you completely reject the presence of God, then, well, if you completely reject the presence of God, then you probably don't even use this concept of God's plan because you, you reject that there's God. But let's just, just humor me here. If God gives you the right to completely reject God's presence, then why would they care if you make the, the high school soccer team next spring? Right? God does not really give a damn. Right? God doesn't care. Right? Because God has bigger, bigger fish to fry than uh, your little uh, goals and the things that you wish to achieve. I'm not saying that your goals are little, but in the big picture with all the humans that your God is responsible for, all right, your little goals from month to month, week to week, day to day, and this thing that you're trying to achieve is probably a very little significance in God's bigger plan of what God has going on. All right, he or she or it or whatever you want to call God. Okay, everybody got it? If all your actions were God's plan, then there'd be no need for you to listen to a show like this one. Nor would there be any need for any form of self-help whatsoever or any form of personal professional development whatsoever. Why? No need for a gym to exercise in. No need for books for you to get smarter with. No need for teachers to learn from. We would just wait for whatever God had planned and just allow it to happen. You don't have to do anything. Uh, just sit around and just wait. All right, if it's God's plan for me to lose weight, I don't have to go to the gym. It's God's plan for me to lose weight. So let me just wait till the weight just drops off of me miraculously. Nobody does that. All right? Why does nobody do that? Because we all understand that we have we have agency in making our outcomes happen in life. So we have to go and do something with the free will that we were granted when we were born and make the outcomes happen that we want to happen. And you listen to a show where I say every single day, the personal initiative to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. So if you are saying that your success or your desired outcome is God's plan, that means you're waiting for things to happen. That means you're going against the grain of exactly what I talk about here on this show. So which one is it? You got to pick one. Because either you're leaving it to God to get it done or you're leaving it to you to get it done. But somebody has to take control of the steering wheel. Again, episode 1282 is called the 5149 rule. What is the rule? Let me state it very simply. Anything that you wish to achieve in life, you must have 51% ownership of the outcome. That's a majority stake, by the way, for those of you who don't understand why 51% is the number. 51% is a majority stake of ownership. You own 51%, at least 51% of anything, that means you have a majority stake, meaning no one can ever have more ownership than you do. All right, try to do the math. You figure that out. If anyone can ever own more than you if you own 51% is impossible. Most anyone else can own is 49%. This means you are the majority stake owner, which means if push comes to shove and the decision has to be made, you get to make it because you have more ownership than anyone else. And you need to have a majority stake of ownership in your outcomes and in your life. That is including with God. All right, God, that's why God gave you free will, so you can do what you want. Again, you can completely reject everything that God tells you to do, and God's not going to stop you. He's not going to stop you from doing it. You can go in and do it. Now, whatever you believe about what happens after you die, that's a different conversation for a different day that is outside of the scope of this show. But you do have a right to do whatever you want, whether you think is right or wrong, whether somebody else thinks is right or wrong, doesn't matter. You got a choice. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? Since we all do things consciously and intentionally to improve our situations, or at least what we think will improve our situations, that is a clear indicator through our own actions that we all know that not everything is based on God's plan. Because if it was, again, why do you do so? Why do you go to the gym if it's God's plan for you to be in shape? Like God didn't make you go to the gym. You chose to go to the gym. If it's God's plan for you to do it, you don't have to go to the gym. If it's God's plan for you to be smart, you don't have to read books. If it's God's plan for you to make money, you don't have to go try to sell anything. All you got to do is just sit there and wait for it to happen. But all of us know that it doesn't work that way. We know that we all have some control, some control, and some people believe they have more than others over what happens in our lives. So don't call it your plan when you do something that you want and it goes the way you want to, and then call it God's plan when it's something that you're afraid to commit to. All right, that's bullshit. I'm not saying God is bullshit. I'm saying what you're saying is bullshit. 
you're calling it your plan when you succeed and you get what you want, right? You do something on purpose and it works out. You're like, yeah, that was my plan. A plan came together. I had a plan, I had a goal, I worked hard, you know, I believed in myself, I made it happen. That's what people say when they win, right? They give credit to themselves. And you might give a little bit of credit to God, but then when you don't want to commit to something, and you don't want to take ownership of it because maybe you're afraid of the accountability that comes with it as a package deal because the, the package deal with commitment is accountability. Now you want to say, well, if it's God's plan for me to succeed, then I'll do it. See, that's, that's you backing off of the goal. That's you saying, all right, I'm not really committed to this goal, so I'm going to put it on God. And if it doesn't happen, I can say, well, hey, I guess it wasn't God's plan for that to happen because that makes you sound uh, worldly. No, bullshit. It makes you sound like you're bullshit. And that's what it sounds like. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is your success is not God's plan. Number two, God does not give a damn about you launching your podcast. God does not care if you finish writing your book. God does not care if you lose that last 25 pounds that you've been working on for the last three years. God does not care about those things. Why do I say that? Those are your responsibilities. Those are not God's responsibilities. Now, some people disagree with me on this point right now. Some of you are disagreeing with me, with me right now as you are listening to me speak and you're, you're deciding whether or not you're going to keep listening to the rest of this episode. But keep listening because sometimes the, the smack in the face is exactly what you need. Okay? You believe that everything that happens is part of God's plan, right? So which means I'm wrong. So anything that happens in your life is God's plan. Okay, let's, let's, let's address that. Let's go into that. You see, the good thing about this show over here and me, period, and those of you who are new around here and those of you who are old around here, I'll remind you or inform you if you didn't know. Good thing about this show is that we address things directly. We, we dance around no topics. All right, any topic I address, we will dive deep into it. I'll address the sides from which I am, the side that I'm standing on, my perspective. I'll also address the counterpoints, the counter perspectives, where somebody might say, well, Dre, you might think that, but what about this? I'll address the what about this. All right, I won't, I won't ignore it. Now, there are many people out there who call themselves thought leaders, uh, politicians, teachers, government people, uh, alleged experts who will completely ignore certain counterpoints because they don't have answers to those counterpoints. I ignore no counterpoints. And if I miss one, you can let me know. I gave you my text number. I do read those text messages. You can let me know if I miss the counterpoint and I will address it. Either I'll address you directly when you text me about it, if I need to address you, or if I feel like it's a big enough topic that everyone needs to hear it, I'll address it on the show. And if you've been listening long enough, you know that I have done this and I will do it and I'll continue to do so. So now let's continue. If you believe that everything that happens is part of God's plan, which means I'm wrong to say that it's not God's plan. Okay, here's the thing. When you achieve a great success, when somebody wins an, an Oscar award for acting or a Grammy award for music or a, some kind of subjective award in sports, they usually, you hear some form of thanking God, right? They thank God for their success. All right, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you thank God when you failed? Let me take a sip of water while you think about that one. When was the last time you launched a product, nobody bought it, and you got on your knees and you thanked God for that failure? When was the last time uh, you went on a date with the man or woman of your dreams, they completely rejected you, didn't call you back, there wasn't a second date, and you thanked God for the fact that they rejected you? When was the last time you had this big idea that you knew was going to be majorly successful and it was a complete flop and you thanked God for that great idea not working? When was the last time you did that? See, I hear about people thanking God when things work. When do you, when's the last time you thank God when it didn't work? Because see, if everything was God's plan, that means the good stuff and the bad stuff is equally part of God's plan, which means you should be thanking God for every single thing with an equal amount of enthusiasm. When's the last time you did it? When's the last time you thank God when things went wrong? And since you can't answer this question, that proves that you don't actually believe that everything is God's plan, which is my point that I'm making here today. It's not all God's plan, it's your plan. And sometimes you just have bad plans. Sometimes you just got a poor strategy and that's why your stuff is not working. And that's okay. Good thing about recognizing that you have a poor strategy is you can fix it and you get a better strategy. But if you put it all on God, well, who knows? Maybe God's whole strategy for you to fail your whole life. Is that, is that what you're saying? Or is it God's plan for you to win your whole life? Well, nobody wins everything that they do. Usually we win or lose based on our own actions. Everything can be breaking down to what we did or what we didn't do. Now, if you want to say that there's some divine intervention that goes into that, God was somehow involved, had a hand in it, I'm completely fine with that. And again, remember what I told you, 5149 rule. I'm not saying God can't be involved. All right? If you believe in God and you believe 
God is guiding you or has something to do with everything that happens in your life, I'm completely fine with that. What I'm saying is that the 5149 rule applies, meaning you have a majority ownership stake in everything that happens to you in your life. So if you fail and you think God had a hand in that failure, I'm completely fine with that. Understand you have the majority ownership of that failure, which means and when everybody's examining who's responsible, they ain't looking at God, they're looking at you. Everybody got it? You can't just take the stuff that you want in life and then credit God and then ignore the stuff you don't want and blame some other human being for messing it up. If everything is God's plan, then everything is God's plan. Even the stuff, the people, and the circumstances that you hate. All right, it can't be God's plan half the time. All right, A plan is a plan. It's either all the time or it's none of the time. So which one is it? And since you, let's think about this, you are taking actions to consciously control and influence circumstances on your own, your actions are proof that you know that it's not all on God. I mean, after all, what do you listen to? You listen to a show called Work On Your Game, which means you are consciously looking for ways to improve yourself based on your own actions and your own uh, intentions. But the fact that you're listening to this show is a uh, unconscious ad admission of that point. The fact that you're even listening to this show. So you know it ain't all God's plan. Uh, a good amount of it is on you. That's why you're taking responsibility. I'm, I'm not saying this is a negative thing. It's a good thing that you're listening to this because you're taking ownership and responsibility. And you're saying, what can I do to make my situation better? All right, let me go look up a show that's called Work On Your Game. Right, you just look at the title of this show. You know it has something to do with you doing something to improve your situation. All right, and the fact that you're listening proves that you understand that even on a basic, basic, basic surface level. So I'm encouraging you to not to take less responsibility. I'm encouraging you to take more. Ideally, you take 100%. So the 5149 rule, but ladies and gentlemen, is a baseline. That's like the, the bare minimum is the 5149 rule. You have 51% ownership stake in your success in life. Ideally, you have a 100% ownership stake in your life. Ideally, 100%. Because if you have a 100%, then that means every single thing that happens to you or for you is because of you. And the more ownership you're willing to take, the more power you have. The more power you have, that comes with the responsibility. And that allows you to have control over situations. And most of you probably want more power and more influence over the circumstances of your life, not less. Am I guessing correctly? If I'm wrong, again, I gave you my text number. You can let me know if I got any of this wrong up to this point, but I'm not done. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is your success in life is not God's plan. Number three. Your God, whomever this may be, watches over the failures and the losers just as much as they watch over the winners and the successful. True or not? What religion do you follow? Is there a religion in which God, your God, whoever, whatever you call, whatever you refer to God as, is there a religion of anyone listening to this? Again, I'm no expert on any religion, so if any of you knows one better than me, then you can fill me in on this. Send me a text. My number is 305-384-6894, for which God watches over the failures and the losers more than they watch over the successors and winners, successful and winners. Is there a religion where it's the opposite way, where God pays more attention to the winners than he does the losers? Is there a religion where God pays more attention to the rich people than they do to poor people? Is there a religion where God is, God shows favoritism to a person based on the outcomes that they have or the success that they have or how much they're winning or how much they're losing? Last I checked, God watched over everybody with an equal amount of attention. Last that I checked, again, that some of you know better than I do. So again, sometimes I don't know things. I'm posing an open question here. So anybody can help me if I just happen to be uh, ignorant on this subject, which I might be. So help me out. It is not God's job, nor is it God's priority, whether or not you fail or succeed. Let me say that one again. It is not God's job, nor is it God's priority, whether you fail or succeed. It is your job and priority, whether you fail or succeed. God has not laid out a plan for you to be successful or a plan for you to fail, nor has God laid out a plan for you to be average. God has given you free will and you could choose to be any one of these that you want. Successful, average, or a failure. You have a choice. It sounds good and it feels good to call it God's plan. You know why it feels good to call it God's plan? Because it's like, it's not on me. All right, I'm gonna just do my stuff and you know whatever happens is not really based on my actions. So you never have to look in the mirror and take accountability and ownership of the things that you did that caused you to be where you are in life. It's much easier to say it's on God because then you don't have any ownership. It's not on you. Well, hey, 
I did everything that I could, but hey, I failed anyway. It must have been God's plan for me to fail. Right, it's much easier to say that than it is to say, you know what, I failed. I must have had some bullshit plans or some bad strategies or a poor system, or you know what, I just didn't execute the way that I was supposed to. It's much harder to have that conversation with yourself than it is to say, well, it must have been God's plan for me to fail. See, I told you we don't step around anything here, just in case you didn't know. You had just as much opportunity, you have just as much opportunity to fail as you do to, to, as you do to succeed. You have just as much opportunity to meet, be mediocre as you do to be extraordinary. The only difference, whether you fail, succeed, or you're somewhere in the middle, mediocrity, average, the difference is not God, the difference is you. This is why we have free will. Look around in your life right now. Let me ask you this question. Are there other people that you know or know of? Coworkers, family members, uh, neighbors. Let's just go with that. Classmates, ex-friends. Are there other people in your world that you know or know of who had or have the same opportunity that you do who are less successful than you are? They have done less than you have. Maybe they work less hard than you do. They wake up later. They go to bed earlier. They don't work as hard. They are not as committed. They are not as disciplined. They are less consistent. Do you know any people who fit that description? Of course you do. Do you know people who might be beating you in some of those categories? Most of you probably know one of those people too. And what's the difference between you and them? Is it because God just decided? Or I just, God just randomly decided, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. He just picked you to be the success and then to be the failure. Is that what happened? Or vice versa? No. It's because of the choices that that person made compared to the choices that you made and continue to make for both of you. The differentiating factor is you and I and them and whoever, whatever other humans we're talking about. We're not talking about God. We're talking about human beings. It sounds good to put it on God. Again, especially when we succeed and we can say, oh, I succeeded because of God. No, no, you didn't. If you succeed because of God, that means you fail because of God, too. All right, so we got to be equal opportunity here. God created you and gave you a brain and gave you dominion over yourself and over the earth and even over animals as well. Now he is watching you to see what you do with it. All right, that's the triple truth right there. God's just watching, see what you're going to do with the opportunity you were given. And then when it's over and you go wherever you feel like you go, whatever you want to believe, continue to believe it, for whatever you practice, practice it, wherever you feel like you go when it's all over, God's going to judge you based on the opportunity that you were given and then you do what you, and then you got to deal with that conversation. And that's between you and God. All right. But what's happening right here in the mere mortal world, the human world is everything that I just said so far in today's masterclass. And let's recap what I just said, just in case you missed it. Today's topic, once again, is your success is not based on God's plan. I told you this episode was coming, by the way. So next time you hear me tell you something is coming, uh, it's coming. Point number one, this is an excuse that people use to stay non-committal to their goals. I, the excuse is God's plan, whatever you're calling God's plan. Putting it on God takes all the pressure and responsibility off of you and puts it on God. Now, don't put it on God. Remember the 5149 rule, the responsibility and pressure and accountability, if you want to call that a commitment for creating your success is not on God. It is on you. God gave you free will to do whatever you want to do, even completely rejecting God if you so choose. Therefore, you can't say it's God's plan whether you fail or succeed. If God will let you completely reject him, then why would he let, why would he just uh, randomly take control over your outcomes in life. That, it just doesn't add up. Point number two, God does not give a damn about you launching your podcast, finishing your book, or how much weight you lose in the next six months. Those are your responsibilities, not his. Some people are disagreeing with me on this point, okay? When you achieve success, you thank God. Do you, do you thank God when you achieve failure? No, you don't. Therefore, you are inherently, by that truth, admitting that you don't put everything on God. You only put it on God when it's convenient for you. But see, God is not a God of convenience. I don't know what religion you practice. I don't know what any one of them that says you can call God when it's convenient for you, but ignore him in all the other times. All right, again, if there's one that I don't know about, you let me know. Point number three, your God, whomever that may be, watches over the failures and the losers equally as much as they watch over the winners and the successful. So it's not God's job, nor is it God's priority, whether or not you fail or succeed. It's not on God's to-do list to make sure that you fail, nor is it on God's to-do list to make sure that you succeed. It sounds good and it feels good to know that maybe you have something or someone outside of yourself who was responsible for your outcomes. I'm here to throw a glass of cold water in your face with ice in it that no, it is not anyone else's responsibility, nor is it anyone else's priority, whether or not you succeed. It is on you. Now, for some of you that makes you feel afraid and nervous and anxious, for some of you that makes you feel alive, awake and invigorated, it doesn't matter how it makes you feel. The whole point is that it's true. 
Uh, whether you're going to be successful or not is based on what you do or what you do not do. And if you look at your own life up to this point, all 30 years, all 45 years, all 16 years, all 27 years, look at your actions and look at your outcomes and tell me where something doesn't add up. You probably can't name one time. It all adds up if you look at it objectively and truthfully, which is difficult for many human beings to do. But if you get someone around you who can tell you the truth, they'll tell you, they'll show you, hey, you got this outcome because you did these things. You got this result because you did this, this, and this. You got this because you didn't do these things. It's pretty obvious when you look at your own life objectively, again, and dispassionately. Unfortunately, many people don't like doing that because, again, the accountability and uh, responsibility that comes with doing so. But that doesn't mean it's not true. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not true. All that being said, text me. Tell me, tell me what I got wrong here. If I got anything wrong, you can let me know. My number is 305-384-6894. If I got something wrong, tell me logically how I got it wrong. All right, not emotionally, but logically how I got it wrong. And since I got it right, you don't have to tell me. You could also text me and tell me how I got it right. And also, work on your game, university.com, where I'm not going to tell you anything is God's plan. I'm going to tell you we're going to make a plan so you have a clear game plan and strategy for getting to your outcomes and systems. Execute consistently so that you are held accountable and you're achieving your outcomes over and over and over again. If that sounds like what you want, your plan, our plan, not God's plan, but your plan, go to work on your game, Work on your game. Dre all day.